Um, so today I am doing a boosting treatment. I'm hoping we have um, everything on here. Um, let me just adjust this camera a little bit. I'm not that familiar with the lives here at the moment, doing them on uh, YouTube. So we are starting out here. There we go. I think we hope everybody can see. Um, could, uh, could someone just post out something here? I just want to make sure that you're able to see what I'm doing here right now. Sorry, it's just um, we've had to adjust some things on the phone here to get this live up. Could somebody just post something to say whether you can hear and see me all right before I get started? All right, I think, um, I think you can see. Great. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Well, hello and welcome, and I'm sorry it's taken a couple of minutes to get started here. How are you all? I'm going to just turn this camera around. You can see me. Hello. It's nice to see everybody. Um, today we are doing a boosting facial, and I want to talk about what does that actually look like? What is a boosting facial? So I'm just going to lower my chair, come into your frame a little bit, talk before we get started here. A boosting facial, depending on what time of year, um, you are in what, what your season is. A boosting facial is whatever, wherever we are at the moment, we are in winter here in Los Angeles, California. And what's happening to our skin is that it's really dry. We have a lot of wind. It is December. Um, the, the wind is what really makes the skin dry. It can make it itchy. And a boosting facial in this case means we need to hydrate, but we also maybe need some brightening, you know, after the blotchy summer. Maybe somebody's left with a little bit of melasma and things like this. So it's important to, you know, to, to, to do a boosting treatment where you are customizing it for, for your client. So everybody's skin's different, as we know. A normal skin is considered a combination skin that means oily somewhere whether it just be here oily combination um, means t-zone oily dry here a dry combination means just oily in this area but mostly dry so what's considered a normal skin is a combination skin and so the reason why i'm pointing this out is because most of the population have a normal skin I am a combination uh, dry skin, which means I only have oil in this area and the rest of my face is dry. But most people are gonna be a combination skin and a boosting treatment has to be customized for that skin type. So we are going to do some extractions. Um, we're gonna look at my model skin here today. We're gonna to be doing a boosting treatment for her skin that's customized, especially for her. That's why customization in facials is really important when you want to do an amazing facial. So this is something I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna get started here right now. Um, I have put a, um, we call these diapers, but they are a great headpiece. You can use a towel, you know, obviously there's many different things you can use on the head to wrap it, but you do want it firm to keep this area, keep the hair out of the face and we're gonna get started. I'm going to readjust my camera here as we get going here now. There we go, guys. I'll be answering some questions uh, a little bit later in the facial, but for right now, I'm going to continue talking and we are going to get started. Um, I've got a lot of hot towels here in, my, here in my hot cabbies, so I'm not having to get up to my sink too much to have to wash my hands, but we are going to um, get started with our facial. And again, this is a boosting facial. It's important to have your different treatments and customizing a facial is um, just so great, whether it be an, a, you know, a 30 minute facial, a 60 minute facial, a 80 or 90 minute facial, it's really nice to be able to customize it for your client. Now look at my client's skin here. Um, she has a really pretty skin. You would have seen her in other videos I've done. When I first met my model, she had very oily skin, a lot of breakouts, larger pores. Her skin coloring was very flat and very gray looking. 
Um, it's not like this anymore. Her skin is just so much healthier. It's so much better. Um, this model in particular is somebody that does have um, gluten intolerance, you know, the, the celiac. So it's, you know, how does this affect the skin? It makes the skin look tired and sluggish a lot as it does her internal organs. Because as we know, whatever's going on in the gut, we know that that is going to really translate in the skin itself and show through here because the skin is the largest organ of elimination. So we always want to make sure that you are, you're being really mindful of what it is that you're looking at. So what's important when you go to do a facial is that you understand, first of all, you've got to understand skin, you guys. You know, this is something that I, you know, do with my Five Star Method course. Um, that's my life's work in that course. And it's all about understanding skin because to do an amazing treatment, you want to know what it is you're looking at. So you want to know what skin type she has and what her subconditions are. And this is very important to, to look at the skin, analyze it, use your Maggie light, come on over, have a look, look at what her skin is and look at everything. You want to look at the sides of the face. Um, very often on the driver's side, you're going to see a little bit of hyperpigmentation from sun damage. Very often down onto this neck area, you want to be looking at the decollete, the neck itself. Um, have a look around the eye area. Now, if you go back on my model's pictures previously, you're going to see she used to have really dark circles, like a major dark circles around her eyes. And this is not something we are dealing with now. So this, what this shows you is, you know, when you are somebody that, that has, you know, an intolerance to certain foods, this area around the eyes can really show a lot because we know in face mapping, that this area here is the stomach. So this is a very important area for us because it's also a thinner skin. It's an area that ages quickly on both men and women. This area here you wanna make sure is an area that you really take care of in life. You wanna be using sun protection here. It's a thinner skin. It's not as thick as other areas of the face. So you wanna make sure that you're really protecting. You're using good eye products around the eyes. Um, a good serum around the eye area might be very useful as well. And um, so this area in particular is one that we, you know, in and, and with my model, um, we want to make sure that we, we do a lot of work around her eyes today because it just it keeps them bright. And when you've got that brightness around the eyes and you keep that skin hydrated and protected, you are going to have a more youthful skin and that is what looks fantastic and looks great and healthy so um, the other thing that my model uh, had had in the past was larger pores and as i said we've be really been able to refine them nicely she's got a little bit of cuprose on the sides of her nose where she's got some broken blood vessels there that can sometimes happen over time especially with somebody that may experience a lot of sinus or hay fever um, where they're blowing their nose a lot and there's a lot of pressure coming in that area. Sometimes people get it if they've had some nose surgeries, they'll get these little burst blood vessels. Um, also from extraction sometimes, and especially if you're using the tools and it's harsh, um, it's important to really make sure that you're protecting and you're not being too aggressive around that area. And by the way, these little blood vessels are very easy to remove. It's going to a dermatologist, they zap them and the little blood vessel itself, it, it withers up and disappears. And it's a very easy procedure, stings a little bit, but it's, it's a good thing to do. A um, little bit of hyperpigmentation, minimal scarring around here on her skin. I'm going to cleanse off her skin shortly. But again, I mean, I, I remember what her skin used to be like. You can go back and look at videos on YouTube. Um, to see this particular model's skin even before we start here. Her skin is just gorgeous. And I, uh, from where we've come with her skin and just a great home care regimen, this is a really, really pretty skin. So, so we're going to get started here now. Um, but these are some of the main things that I'm seeing. A little blotchiness around here, a little bit of hyper and hypopigmentation, but minimal, very, very minimal um, again, this is an area, this side of the face, if you're, you know, driving um, this side, whatever your driver's side is, you're going to usually see a little bit of sun damage there. And that will go down onto the neck area. 
Um, you can see she's got uh, some, you know, some post, um, some scarring. This one feels a little bit lumpy. That tells me there's still infection inside. It's deep. Uh, a lot of these things, um, you know, these big cysts under the skin, they can take a long time to go away and uh, squeezing them or not squeezing them. Um, sometimes you can be left with a mark in the neck area, the skin on the neck, it does not heal quickly. The face heals super fast, the neck, not at all. So you can peel and do a lot on the face, but when it comes to the neck, it doesn't work the same. So whatever, if you are doing extractions in this area, the neck is going to mark very easy and you have to handle it very gently. But this one down here, I can still feel there's um, some infection in there. There's still a little bit of a lump and that is telling me it is deep. Um, and this is something that I know my model has uh, experienced in the past where she has suffered with, you know, these breakouts, the, you know, every month, these couple of nodule painful pimples that come up, hormonal pimples that are painful to the touch and very, very deep. But her skin in general is, it's just, it's extraordinary, really. If, as I said, go back, look at the videos that, that um, of this, my model, um, and her skin right now is just gorgeous from where we've come. So again, I'm going to get started here. Um... I'm actually going to start with using my cleanser, which is my confidence cleanser. And uh, we're in the cooler months, so you wanna make sure, guys, you are not using a cleanser that is foaming, that's going to leave that surface dry because a lot of people have damaged skin barriers, and especially this time of year, because they're over exfoliating, they're over drying out their skin by using strong, harsh, cleansers and they're they're using too many acids and they're just doing too much so this time of year is a time to really pull back and not be doing so much just keep your skin protected keep it hydrated super important so we're going to start here with the cleanser i'm not going to be talking all the way through this video and I will have time to answer some questions at the end. Now you wanna make sure that when you're cleansing, you're cleansing down onto the neck because anybody that's you know, traveling around and uh, out and about, they're going to have sunblock down on this area as well. And you wanna make sure that you're sort of really cleaning the neck area as well. So when somebody's a little bit oily, where are they going to be oily? Around the nose. So you want to make sure that you really clean this area well around the nose. And somebody that has blackheads, they're going to get blackheads all the way up here close by the eye. So it's really important to, to make sure that you are cleaning the skin really well around the eye. The other area is here in between the eyebrows. This is an area that often gets missed. So you wanna make sure that you are cleaning this area really well and that you're paying attention and the eyebrows because hair is a protectant. So you wanna make sure that you're really able to get under the hair, clean the skin really well and, uh, and don't forget about those areas there. Around the hairline is another one. Around the ears, sometimes behind the ears, an oily skin person, often has blackheads behind the ears, as well as inside the ear, uh, which you can, when you go to do extractions, you can totally, you know, take your little tool, have a look and clean out that ear area. Now I know because I've worked on this model a few times in the past, that right now as I massage her skin, her skin is so firm. And I just really get very excited about this because as somebody in my 60s, as we get older, the skin tone starts to decrease. Of course, our collagen, elastin, everything starts declining, sadly. And so it's really important to understand that you need actives 
to keep your skin strong and firm. Now, what's an active? An active is an alpha hydroxy acid. That's going to be your glycolic, your lactic, your malic, your tartaric, your citrus, your mendelic, your azelic acid. Those are all acids of different weight and size. And it's important to use a complex of them, meaning you don't want to just use a glycolic acid. When you're using a serum or a treatment product that has AHA in it, you want to get one that has a complex because the acid, the molecules go to different levels in the skin and you want it to go to different levels in the skin like when you're building a house. You don't just want a strong roof, you have to have strong walls and a strong foundation and it's the same with your acids. You want your acids to be able to get to different levels in the skin to be able to keep the skin structure because it's a structure, you've got all these layers and you want to keep those dermal layers strong. You want to keep the outer layers strong. All of these layers, the, the epidermis, you know, there's, there's many, many layers. And you've got to keep these, the skin layers strong and sturdy because that's what's going to stop you from jarling later in life and your skin falling down as gravity pulls it all down. The other active is your retinols. You've got your retin, retin, retinol, which is the smallest molecule, your retinoic acid, which is um, considered um, the prescription strength retinol. Uh, and then you've got your, your acetates and your palmitates and your vitamin A1 and your A2. And again, they're all different molecules of different weight and size. The more molecules you can work with, the better your skin foundation is going to be. That's why I'm big on using complexes. Um, your formula matters tremendously. So you do want a formula that's got a good delivery system. And how do we know if we have a good formula? We really don't unless you try it. And if your skin starts to show improvement, then you know it's, it's, it's feeling a little bit tighter, a little better. You know it's getting to levels in the skin where it needs to be. I mean, it's, it's good to always, um, you know, look up reviews on products because there are thousands of them out there and, uh, and some are even the really expensive ones. They're not better necessarily than some of them, le you know, less expensive. So the line I'm working with here right now is Rejuvi. It is not an expensive line. It's a line I've worked with for 30 years. Um, it is something that it works, it just does. Um, it's very effective, it's what I use on my skin and when it, the moisturizer, the serums are great. So now look, we've cleaned her skin off. Again, if you guys, you can go back on the YouTube, have a look at what her skin used to be and look how gorgeous her skin is now. And we're just starting. So we've cleansed her skin off. We can see her skin is healthy. Um, I haven't stripped it. We haven't used a stripping cleanser that's made her skin feel all tight. Her skin feels healthy. Now, when a skin is healthy and dewy and pretty like it is right now, it's going to accept more of everything. So that means more serums, more treatment products. The next, next product I'm going to do is an exfoliator. I'm going to use one that has a little bit of the papaya enzyme but it also has glycolic in it. it, has chamomile powder, it also has um, a little bit of lemon peel powder. And this is exfoliating mask. It's a delicious product. Uh, whenever I use this, people always go, oh, it's so nice, it smells so great. It's a beautiful, beautiful product. And it is a, um, it's not a physical exfoliant. A physical exfoliant is one that has granules and that's not for everybody, okay? I'm mixing a little bit of healing gel with it. I don't want it to be too strong. So I'm just mixing a little bit of it here and I'm doing it very close to my client's, client's face just so you can see what I'm doing. But normally, obviously you're not doing it close by your client's face because you don't want it to you know, spit on over onto the face. And you always want to make sure your client has her eyes closed because product can get in the eye and then that can be very uncomfortable for them. So make sure they're comfortable on the table and make sure they have their eyes closed. So now this one here is a cream exfoliant um, in that it's what we call really a, um, a chemical exfoliant. Um, it has, again, the papyrum enzyme papwin 
but it also has glycolic in it. And so she may feel a little bit of tingling on her skin, uh, stinging, that will be very normal for her. I'm only gonna leave it on a few minutes. You don't need to leave it on a long time. Uh, this one here absorbs dead cells. Uh, the ones that have granules in it are more of a physical exfoliant and they kind of like, you know, get into the pores sometimes, but this one absorbs out. So it's absorbing dead cells, it's absorbing oil, it's absorbing the bacteria and the buildup that happens within a pore. And that's a fabulous thing. That's what makes your, your alpha hydroxy acids so effective. Um, because they have multiple, you know, um, duties that they do. They, they do a lot of things. They absorb dead cells. Um, they lighten brown spots. They strengthen the skin. They go, meaning they go down to those deeper levels. They get to live cells, which is when you feel tingling, stinging on your skin, you are getting to live cells. And that's a wonderful thing. And that happens in where our fibroblast cells are. So, um, so that's always just a wonderful thing to be able to get to live cells. That's how you're going to keep your skin younger and pretty. It's important to, um, to get to live cells. The other thing that, that alpha hydroxy acids do is they lessen the depth of a wrinkle because again, by stimulating collagen elastin, you are going to lessen the wrinkle. It's not gonna be as deep. So it gets in, it cleans out the pore, it lightens the brown spots, as we said. Um, you know, I'm taking this up quite close up here by the eye because I said an oily skin person is going to have oil up here by the nose. And um, you wanna make sure you're doing it either side of the ear because again, this area here over by the ear is going to be oily in front of the ear area as well. So you wanna make sure that you're really able to to put this everywhere where it needs to be, around the nose, the corners of the nose, the lip. A lot of people get brownish on the lip, especially if they're on a contraceptive pill. Um, but this is an area then face mapping is, it, it relates to our female sex organs. So, um, you know, in face mapping, which if you go on and you wanna study more about this guys, you you can go to, I have a whole course, an online course it's five steps and uh, it has all my webinars in there. My webinars on extractions, on massage, on food related acne, on hormonal acne. All of my webinars are in there and you get it for free, the five star method. And it teaches you a lot about face mapping, how we look at somebody's face and determine what's going on internally. Um, this is very important. That is called the five, five star method and it's uh, it's a one-time price for a lifetime access. Okay, we are going to remove this now, this exfoliator. Now, when you're taking off things on the face and you're using something wet, you want to be careful not to get the towels too wet or the headpiece too wet because what happens is then the client is sitting with this wetness around them and that is uncomfortable. So sometimes when you do that, you need to adjust the, the little headpiece um, that will be very helpful to do that. So. I'll show you in a moment what I mean. But right now we are just going to get this exfoliator off. Now, once you remove an exfoliator, particularly when it's had a little bit of glycolic in it, or maybe your exfoliator has a little bit of lactic acid, but once you remove the exfoliator, the skin is gonna be a little bit stingy and it's gonna be tingling a little bit. So you want to make sure you can get on some of your aloe vera, which I use my healing gel, the Rejuvi healing gel. I use it a lot in my treatments. So you're always going to see me using a lot of healing gel. I'm just going to get a towel out and we are out of my hot cabby. And we're going to, I'm gonna cool them down just slightly. We don't wanna use anything too hot on the skin once you've done um, an exfoliant and you've got a little bit of a glycolic acid residue on there. 
So again, now you see how I'm using these wet towels and that's kind of, you know, falling onto my towel I have underneath her head, um, which is going to make that wet as well. And again, being in the cooler months, I have a heater on my bed, but you still don't want wet towels anywhere that's gonna be uncomfortable for your client. Okay, so we've got that off there now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly put on a little bit of healing gel because I know her skin is going to be stinging a little bit and we do not want discomfort um, at this point because um, it's something that, it's a mild exfoliant. Um, I used a bit of healing gel with it when I first put it on, which dilutes it a little bit, but I don't want too much discomfort. I just want a nice clean skin to now be ready so that when I go to put my serums and my treatment products on, I'm going to be able to do a beautiful facial for her. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to take this off here now, I'm gonna pull these pieces in and what I like to do is I roll back this headpiece here so I can get a drier piece that's going to then be closer to her face. So it's, it's going to just keep now you can see here, this was this line here, about half an inch or a little bit less than that, it out from there. Now she has a dry piece of linen against her face, which is now the head wrap. And again, over here, you can see there's a line over here that's giving her a dry towel against her face, which is not allowing it to be wet. It's a little wet around here. I'm pulling this back here on the sides and just keeping her head away this wetness here from stop you know so it's not touching her here and making her feel cold i'm going to pull up the sheet a little bit now you can adjust the towel and flip it and um, i don't like tags on towels you don't want this anywhere near your client but in this case it's over here on the side but you can flip it like that so now you've got dry towel here against her skin and all of these things are very important when you're wanting to do not only a five-star treatment, but for your client to feel like, oh, she's really taking good care of me. These, these things are very, very important. So now the next thing that's going to go on her skin is a serum. And I'm going to put on, uh, I'm gonna use the Q Flavonoid. This is a Rejuvi product. It is a fantastic serum. Um, you can buy any of these products here. If you don't have an account, you're not using Rejuvi and you wanna set up a pro account, you have access to over 30 videos at educateyourskin.com. You can set up a pro account. It's um, get the wholesale prices and you get a lot of support um, from our team. So that's at educateyourskin.com. I will put that tag out somewhere as well. Um, so the one thing about this particular serum is that it, it really supports blood vessels. And when somebody has a sensitive skin, and for a lot of you Estes watching right now, you know that a lot of people have sensitive skin. They, for different reasons, they uh, are sensitive. Maybe they have internal allergies. Um, they could have used products in the past and really stripped their skin barrier back. Uh, they could be sensitive because um, you know, they might be taking medications um, that can really make the skin very photosensitive, as does a lot of antibiotics. Uh, so there's different reasons that people have sensitive skin. And you want to be very mindful of always keeping a skin strong and sturdy and not creating a sensitive slate. So this serum is really fantastic. And what I love about this serum is that you can really work it into the eye area all the way around the eyes you can see. Because this eye area is a thinner skin, you wanna make sure that you're really supporting that thinner skin. And often when you stretch and you look under an eye area, you can see the bluey veins there. And we know that this particular product supports circulation. It has um, a complex of what we call flavonoids, vitamin P, vitamin K, it has arnica in it. It's very good for bruising. As we know, as we get older, our skin gets thinner and bruising happens very easy on you know, all over your body, on your hands, 
Um, so anything that can help support the skin, this is just a really beautiful product. It's hydrating, it nurtures and feeds the skin tremendously. And it's just such a beautiful, beautiful product. So um, I use the Q flavonoid a lot in my treatments. Uh, it's very healing on any areas that there is post scarring um, from past pimples. Uh, it's just a really fantastic product. And again, one that you can use all the way around the eyes. It doesn't sting. It's just a beautiful, beautiful product. And what I like to do when I put on my serums is that I work it into the skin uh, before you put on your next product. So work it in, get it into the skin because this is a really, this is a perfect time. Once you've exfoliated the skin, now the skin is really clean. It's going to accept whatever you put on it next. It's going to accept that more than anything else you put on after this. That first product you put on, the more you layer, the less it's uh, going to be getting in there. So this first product, customizing it, it just to really support your client's skin. This is very, very important. So we've got that on, we've worked it into the skin. Um, now the next product I'm going to put on here, I'm going to put a little bit of a retinol on her skin and I'm going to use my retinoid formula. This is another unbelievably fantastic product that I absolutely love. I'm not going to use an abundance, but we are just going, I'm going to use two droppers here and uh, this is another really beautiful product and this is a retinoid. This is a complex of retinols. It's a really beautiful product and I'm just going to put it around here, which is a little bit of blotchiness down here from the sun. And we're just going to work this into this area down here. Now, as you see, when I work in my serums, I'm working in serums that not just one way because to get it to the base of a wrinkle or to get it into a pore, you need to work it in at many, many different ways. So you'll see me doing this, you'll see me going up this way, you'll see me you know, going this way because you need to get your product to the base of a wrinkle. Get it into that pore. You don't just want it to sit at the surface because if you think about an orange, and you go to put a mask on an orange where there's a skin that's not completely smooth. The mask, you've got to work it in to the orange to get the mask to the bottom of the, that hole of the orange. And this is the orange skin. This is important that you understand. You've got to work your products into your skin, massage your products into your skin. Massage is so important for the body, for the face. It's that movement and for a lot of people now, that are doing an enormous amount of Botox and they're just creating such stillness, there's no movement. And what's gonna happen is the skin is going to start to look very sallow and tired looking because the skin needs movement. Our body is made of about 70% water. Think about that, 70% water. When a stream is moving, it stays clean and the water's clean. But when it sits in a dam and it's not moving, it gets dirty and rancid. And that's your body. You've got to move. Movement for your body is important. Massaging your skin is very important. A lot of these people that say that have filler done and the doctor says, don't massage it. That is to me insane because you have to massage your skin. It's, it's a terrible thing to tell somebody to not massage. Don't massage it because it's going to make it disappear, disperse. That's not a healthy thing to do because anything that's gonna just sit there, it's going to create sludge and the skin coloring is not gonna be good. Just there's so many things that are not good about that. So you always wanna be massaging your skin. Movement is very, very important for a healthy body. So, um, you know, when you're moving, um, walking, all of these things, swinging your arms, pushing back, taking big strides, getting to those big lymph nodes in the groin, up under the arm area, very important. So as you can see, I'm still, I haven't even got to my massage yet, right? 
you can see I'm still working in my serums because even though I'm massaging them in, it's like I want them to get in and really do what I, I, I know they can do. And this is it. When you do a facial, everything has a purpose and you want to make sure that everything you're doing, it has a purpose for your client's skin at that moment. Okay, so we've worked in the retinal here. And again, you know, areas that are a problem and a concern for a lot of people is above the lip. We have those little fine lines there and you want to get again, you want to work your serums into these areas. So this is important to put the time into areas that need attention, often around the mouth, around the eyes, the neck area. These are areas that your clients will love you for if you're paying attention because they're areas that tend to age much faster. And as somebody in my 60s, when the neck area is tricky, let me tell you, it's a thinner skin, it's not um, treated the same. This here is the eye gel. This is the next product I'm putting on around my client's eyes. Um, we're putting it all around. And the nice thing about an eye gel, we're not double dipping here, I'm gonna turn my Q-tip up the other way and we're putting it in around here. The nice thing about your eye gel is you want to make sure that you're getting the eye gel and you're putting it all the way around the eye. A lot of people, when they put on an eye product, they just pat these areas. And I'll show you what I mean. They just put it right here, around here, and they go t -t -t -t. And it's not, it's not enough. You want to make sure your eye product, so many people, do not work this area of the eye. And it's really important. You've got a lot of acupuncture points here around the eye, here, here, in here, here. You wanna make sure you're really working the eye area. So right now we're going to, again, we're gonna be massaging this eye area. Now this is how you get the skin to be a fantastic skin. You're taking all these areas and you're putting a lot of attention into these areas that need the work. How many of you have gone to have a facial and they haven't really paid attention to the areas of concern for you and they're just doing whatever they're doing and they're not, they're not putting effort into really looking at what is needed here. Now, because I know my model um, and I've worked on her before, I know that her eye area, and if you go back in the photos, you will not even believe how dark her eyes were. She was so dark around this eye area. And just by movement, getting movement here, she's always known, you know, she's had um, been sensitive to gluten. So it wasn't about her diet as much as it was, okay, she knows she's got that, she eats very well and has to. But, but it's about home care and really you know, specializing it, making it personal for your clients so that your client gets what they need to get. So these areas here, where you're also working on acupressure points because our eyes get tired. Um, my eyes at the end of the day sometimes are so tired and if I just do some of my pressure point work here and around my eyes, I feel so much better. So you wanna make sure you put effort into the eyes as well, and that you're really you're really taking it apart the the skin, and just putting the effort in to work in those products that are so fabulous for these special areas of the face, and just work it in. This is very very important. And as I said, the eye area gets tired but it's so nice. You want to work your eye products in really well. If your nails are really long, you can't do a lot of pressure point work because you need to have um, a certain part of your finger that my nails are almost too long, but not quite. They're, they're still okay for me to work with. But when your nails are long, you can't do pressure point because you need this pad. You need to be able to use a pad of your fingers. 
So depending on what kind of massage you do and what kind of facials you do, you need to make sure that your nails, number one, always look nice and neat, and number two, um, that you're able to do the moves that you need to do that are going to do the best treatment for your client. The thing that I really don't like is when people wear jewelry. It's underneath those rings, um, you know, there's a lot of bacteria and things and I don't like people wearing jewelry when they're doing facials. That is really bothersome to me. So, uh, so now we've worked in our serums, we've worked in our eye product. Now we are ready to, um, to put on our massage cream and just do a little massage on her skin. We've already been massaging her skin, so she's already had a lot of stimulation but we're gonna go a little bit more. I wanna do more down on the neck and the decollete. I'm using my hydrating mask, which is my mask that I like to use as my massage cream. And um, I use this all the time. I do prefer it over the Rejuvi massage cream. This is the Rejuvi hydrating mask. Um, it's a really nice mask. It's got Alantoine, it's got Sumer extract. It's, um, it's got some really nice, ingredients in it and it's just really hydrating and again it's winter so we're, we've got cold um, and we want to really just do a nice boosting treatment that's going to just help hydrate the skin you want to be gentle when you're doing under here you want to make sure you're not going too strong on that neck area there and hurting that throat area Now, because we all have fine facial hair, you want to make sure that when you're massaging the skin that you are getting under that fine facial hair, especially when you're cleansing the skin and you're working in your treatment products, you want to get under that fine facial hair because hair is a protectant. And depending on the area of your client's face that needs the work, that's where you're going to put in the massage. So um, my client has really pretty skin. You know, she's doing a beautiful job of taking care of her skin. And um, but as we get older, um, you know, it's an area that I always work the jaw area a lot because I know because I am older that this is an area that jarling happens. So I'm always very conscious. Um, my model's really very young, but I'm always very conscious of just making sure that I'm really kind of massaging this jawline area very well and finishing your moves. But to finish at your points is very important. You don't want to be sloppy with your massage. I talk a lot about the moves and my new webinar that I'm doing in January is all about um, the different kinds of facials that you can do at a 30 minute facial, what you need to do in a 30 minute facial, um, a 60 minute facial. And then when somebody's running late, what do you do? You know, how do you give them a fabulous facial, but you've only now got 40 or 45 minutes to give them an hour facial. So all of these things are very important. This is my next webinar that is in three weeks in January. Uh, you can sign up for that. Um, again, if you're a five-star member, and I know a lot of you on here watching right now are five-star members, you get all of that for free because all my webinars are free for my five-star. But if you want to sign up for that webinar, you can go to the five-star method and dot com and sign up for that webinar. And that's going to show you me working on, I think we're working on three different models. Um, actually, it might be four different models and um, yes we're doing a, a couple of 30 minute facials one on an oily skin 
um, with a, a that's been experiencing fungal acne and then a, another 30 minute on a drier skin we're doing a 60 minute facial um, we are doing uh, a facial on somebody when you only have 45 minutes and you you need to be able to do an amazing treatment like what do you do when you you only have x amount of time and time is important it's important for yourself to keep on time with your treatments uh, so that you're not falling behind with clients that are coming in after for the rest of the day and also for your clients they don't want to be you know they ha they have to be on a schedule too so it's really important that you keep on time and that you know how to manage that and still be able to do a skin analysis but recommend product that your clients need you know this is very important it's all about being a five-star esthetician you have to be able to recommend um, you know some might say prescribe a regimen because everybody needs a regimen at home that every day what you do at home is really crucial for the success of a beautiful skin so all of these things are really important So what we're doing is uh, we've really fed the skin a lot. We've worked in the retinols, so we've given it that active to keep the skin tone nice and tight. Her pore size is beautiful, um, but we're just kind of really getting the circulation going and hydrating, layering and hydrating the skin, layering with products and just keeping the skin really healthy and pretty. massaging muscles we're stimulating muscle tone and that helps keep the skin healthy and strong massage stimulates muscle tone it brings oxygen to the blood it keeps the skin pretty and healthy and for the body the same massage is just so wonderful it's very healthy moving the lymphatic system and the lymphatics are what we call our garbage disposal. They take nutrients to our blood, but they also get rid of a lot of the, the garbage. So you want a healthy lymphatic system. You don't want to have blockages. You want to keep things moving. It's, it's going to keep you healthier, young and younger, longer. Okay, so we've done our massage there now. And what we've done, if you kind of review the massage that I've done, you can see that we've worked the eye area well. We've worked around the mouth area really well. We've done that neck area, the rolling moves up the neck. We've, um, we've really focused and concentrated on the eyes a lot, but we've done a lot of really nice moves in, uh, in around this area here, just to help support that eye area, which I know for her, she can get quite dark around the eye area it, when she's, you know, not, if she wasn't sort of as good with her regimen, then that would be an area that we would notice at first. Okay, we're going to use two 
warm towels again. You can use um, the larger towel or individual ones. I do either or. These are just the washcloths. And what I'm doing is I'm not going to remove it 100% everything, but I'm just going to wrap the corners around the face here like so. And now we are. Just a light little removal, nothing too major. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put goggles over her eyes and we're going to just bring the light on over and see if there is any extractions that are needed. Um, I'm using the little um, cotton that I can really maneuver here which I love and um, I like to be able to use cotton that's stretchy and these are my 4x4's gauze and they're just really nice to be able to maneuver like that. Sometimes because my goggles have been in the sterilizer they're a little bit hot and I don't want to put that directly onto the skin so using the cotton pad underneath it keeps everything cleaner and just disposable stuff for me is fabulous. So I'm just bringing on over the light here and we, um, we're we just going to do a very light little extraction on her today. She doesn't need an abundance, but she does have blackheads, which is very normal. Anybody with an oily skin is going to have blackheads and that is oil. So it's very, very normal for that to be the case. So I'm just going to grab my gloves and I will do some extractions here. Now it's important, a lot of you when you come out of beauty school, and I see this a lot, especially with new SDs, when you go to put uh, turn on the Maggie light, you turn it on over your client's face and it's very important that you don't do that. It's important that you put on, the, turn on your light away from your client's face and then you bring the light over to your client. But you don't turn it on over their face because it's shocking. Um, you want to turn it on away and then bring it on over. And you just kind of need to be mindful of things. And sometimes when you come straight out of beauty school, it's hard to think about all of these things that make a difference, but this kind of, you know, as you become more advanced with your treatments, you're going to be more mindful of things to do that are just going to be more comfortable for your clients, like keeping the towels dry around the hairline and some of these things that we've spoken about just earlier here. Okay, now when I go to use my tissues, and um, again, I don't normally do this so cl close to my client's face, but just to show you, I use Puffs tissues. I prefer that stronger. Sometimes I have to use Kleenex, but Puffs are my preferred tissue. Fold them in half, tear, fold over the corner, make sure you wrap the finger really well, and so you've got a tight grip so that when you go to do your extractions, you can see what you're doing. It's very important. A lot of people are very messy with their tissues and, um, and this is something that um, you want to make sure that you, that you have a really tight line so you can see what you're doing. And again, her skin, my client's skin is very, very clean. It's, it's just really um, very clean and beautiful. She's doing an amazing job of taking care of her skin. And blackheads are normal, you know, for, for and especially, you know, it shows as oil. Um, a blackhead is made up of bacteria, dead cells, and sebum. And this is an area that, um, you know, blackheads, you clean them out, they come back. But why do we extract them? Why do we, why do, we do this in a facial? Well, I'll tell you why we do this, is we do this because 
you don't want a blackhead to embed because when a blackhead embeds and it keeps getting bigger, it's gonna stretch your pores and make your pores larger. So you always wanna make sure that you are extracting and cleaning the skin because that's gonna keep your pore size small. That's why facials are so important to have extractions done. Um, you know, it's, it's just a very important thing. And then once you extract and the pores clean, now you can go on and do a, a stronger AHA on the skin and that's going to help the pores stay small. And that's how you do a customized facial and really, you know, get great results in shrinking pores. A lot of people say you can't make pores smaller, but you absolutely can. I, I can't believe it when I hear even doctors say you can't do that. It's because, you know, a lot of people are too lazy to do the extractions and get it out. You've got to get it out. Once it's out, you can shrink a pore because you're stimulating your fibroblast cells. Your fibroblast cells, again, are the batteries to your collagen and elastin fibers. And this is something once you stimulate that, you are going to have a stronger skin and a tighter skin. And that's how your pores stay smaller in size. Very, very clean skin. Really taking great care of her skin here. As I said, she's really doing a fantastic job. This way, thank you. Now, the reason I'm moving these pads out now, my goggles would not be um, hot anymore. They they cool down, and now I can I'm not afraid to have it be against the skin but also I need to be able to get to the blackheads up high on the sides of her nose. And, and that's going to be up in this area here where we wanna make sure we're able to really clean up here on the sides of the nose and be able to Now that one nodule on the neck, you cannot touch that because it's it's an underground one, it's deep, um, and I can feel the bulb down underneath there, but the best you can do is, is massage it and, uh, and just try to get some movement there. So that's this one down here on the neck that we looked at earlier down here, um, and that's one that just, you know, needs to be massaged and treatment product needs to be worked into it, and that's how you're going to get movement in that area so that it's going to do something because you don't want it just to sit there you want it to either come up and surface or you want it to disperse underneath and um, you know the infection then sort of disappears within the body but but when they just sit there and there's no movement it's it's frustrating because then you can have a bump and it just stays there for a really long time and you don't want that you want it to be able to you know either come up show your face or disappear. That's what we want. Very, very clean skin. I said you can really see she's just doing a incredible job of taking care of her skin because I know her skin. I've worked on it before and it was nothing like it is right now. It's just a beautiful skin. A um, little, little bit of sun damage down here on this and particularly on this area here, the driver's side. So what I would say to my client is in the future, like when she puts on her sunblock, just really make sure and it's important to touch it so they know where you're talking about. Um, because, you know, sometimes they're putting it sort of here and other areas, but you just want to touch it and say, when you put your sunblock on, make sure you're being really attentive to this area here because this area here needs more sunblock or uh, you know more layers. So once we've done that, um, I'm gonna put an alpha hydroxy acid on her skin now. And that's going to be a beautiful boost for her skin. 
And in the past, I've used to do more the normalizing, which is the one for oily skin. Um, and even though her skin is, uh, she has an oily skin, it's just, um, it's just really great. So what I'm gonna do today is the fruit complex number one. And um, this is a really great AHA. I'm putting it on cotton here. And this, now the pores are clean. This is what's going to help kind of smarten them up and keep the pore size small. It's gonna also help lighten some of this brownness down here. So we want to be going against the hair so that we're getting under the hair. So it's really helping to brighten up that little bit of melasma and blotchiness on the skin. It's kind of a little strong in smell but putting it above the lip there. And I'm taking this underneath the chin area there as well. I'm gonna go down under here, and go down onto the neck a little bit here. And I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put a slightly stronger um, AHA one design for pimples on that spot there too on her neck that's that nodule so you can see her skin's a little bit red that's partly from extractions and it'll be a little red from this uh, aha as well but all of that will be gone by the time i finish the facial okay this is a normalizing again if you are an sd and you want to set up a pro account you can go to educateyourskin.com all of these products, we, we sell them on there for wholesale people and also retail people, but not, not, not all of these products are retail items. A lot of this is professional items. So this one I'm just spotting on, as you can see on that nodule, we want that to get in deep down there and uh, do its job. And while this is on for a couple of minutes, um, I'm gonna get my cryo sticks and we're gonna be doing cryo on her. I'm gonna get some fresh water. I'm gonna readjust this headpiece again, and we're gonna just pull that on down again, as I did here before, just sort of roll it on down a little bit so it, we don't have quite the wetness there going on. And again, I just wanna keep it, her hair out of the way a little bit so it's coming back here off the face, but we have a, a good view and it's, uh, Clean water and, and cryos. So I'm just getting that right now. My cryo sticks I keep in the freezer and that way they stay very, very cold and perfect. So I have my cryo and I've got my fresh water. Clean up my hands here behind. I often use the warm towels from the hot cabbie. It has a little sterilizing light in there which uh, just sterilize just the surface of the towels but just helps me especially when I'm filming and I've got a camera uh, you know in the way of my sink a little bit um, okay we've left that on a few minutes that's all that's needed you can see she's quite pink after what we've done I'm getting cold water here and we are now going to lightly take this off The skin's gonna feel a little bit itchy as it does once you remove your AHA. Healing gel. You want to get that on quite quickly because the skin is going to be stinging a little bit after you take off your AHA product. Okay, 
the next products, um, or what I'm going to be putting on next is my cryo sticks. Now all of these you can purchase them at um, educateyourskin.com. We have them there for wholesale price as well as the retail. And these are a beautiful, beautiful stick. They're completely, just the shape is gorgeous and they stay really cold. They're amazing. And you don't want to leave it on the skin too long in any one place. You want to be moving it. You want to have something on the skin, whether it be you can do it, um, whether you have a face oil or if the oil suits your skin. I don't particularly love oils, but, um, but the healing gel for me is just perfect, especially for an oily skin. want to move it around the face I'm just going to hold this on this area down here, this pimple on the neck, this nodule. Remember I said we want to get it moving, so it needs massaging. We want it either to show its face and come up into a pustule, or we want it to disappear and disperse and not leave a mark, because those big nodules affect the melanocytes which is the, um, within a melanocyte, you've got a cycle, which is called tyrosinase. And it, uh, you, you know, once you, you sort of affect the, the melanocyte, you wanna make sure that you can sort of really get in there and uh, that it's not gonna leave a mark. So, you know, what you put on it, on these areas that are a pimple that are very deep is you you really need to make sure that you're using a good product that maybe even has a little bit of your alpha arbutin in it because it has to have a little bit of a brightening effect as well which is why i really like the q flavonoid because it has a lot of the um the arnica and the vitamin k and the vitamin p um, so it, it it sort of really helps support the skin as it heals uh, you don't just want to dry it out with something that's really drying like a benzoyl peroxide because if you just dry it out then you're not going to get a lot of healing happening and a lot of the time when you just do a drying product like that it, um, it, it stops the pimple from coming up to be a head but it leaves a mark and it dries the sebum inside and then you can't, it's not going to do anything and it just leaves a lump and there's often a mark left as a result of the pimple. So you want to keep the skin really healthy, keep it hydrated, not overnourished, which is different, right? Hydration and nourishment is different. Every skin needs hydration, as does a body. But nourishing, an oily skin doesn't need nourishing because the oil is nourishing, but a dry skin needs nourishing. So hydration is gonna help the skin to stay healthy as it does our body and you've still got to feed the pimples. It, you, you just don't want to overnourish. You've got to feed it and keep it hydrated so that the skin heals quickly. That's what you want to do. So now what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and put a mask on, but the mask I'm going to do on another video on YouTube that I'll probably put up tomorrow because I'm going to do a, a pearl silk mask um, and I'm going to post that one up um, later on. So right now, if anybody has any questions, I'm going to jump on. I can't see the phone at the moment. I'm going to have to sort of adjust myself, look here and see if there's been any questions. I'll answer a few questions before I shut this video down. But basically, we've done everything up to putting on a mask. Okay. 
her skin is ready for a mask i will post that up but it will be posted to my live not my live my video um, on youtube channel tomorrow um, right now i'm just going to turn this around i'm sorry guys i know i'm all over the place here with this um, camera was not so successful in starting it today um, and uh, hello everybody hi <laughs> um, okay let me uh, and there's a lot of questions here so let me just um, gosh okay I'm gonna oh good okay not too we, we're good so I'm gonna lower the light a little bit because I can't see when it's quite so high so I apologize but I'm lowering a little bit right now um, what do you think of dermaplaning with a special razor? Um, when it comes to dermaplaning, I do believe that it's a very personal thing. I don't, I think that you're better to make sure you go to a professional when you are, um, doing dermaplaning. Don't try and do it yourself. You know, it requires a skill because a lot of people, I will tell you, when they first do dermaplaning, they break out with acne. I have a client that was flying down from Seattle, um, you know, who had never dermaplaned before, had great skin, started dermaplaning, and now, you know, she had broken out. Um, and I was, you know, seeing her because it was, and I've, I've had many clients break out from dermaplaning. It's very important you go to a professional, you, you have something like Dermaflash if you're doing it, the home care device. Um, you know, something's got to be very clean. You don't want to do too many passes on the skin with dermaplaning because you can upset the skin barrier. So you want to be really careful of that. Um, uh, hit the like button. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your professional knowledge. It's very, oh good, I'm glad. Thank you very much. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that. Um, what is she spotting on oh okay um i was spotting on probably the normalizing formula melissa um which was the one that i put on a q-tip and it is a an aha designed especially for oily skin it's called the normalizing formula it's um a rejuvi product it's a professional product the half strength we sell in retail which is for pimples um, anyone know what was used for that large nodule, the normalizing formula? And I'll show you what that looks like again. It's right here. Oh, sorry, that's that one there is the peeling. Sorry, it's this one here, the normalizing formula. Okay, so that's the one that you put on the, um, on the pimple. And it can go, if someone's really oily and they're breaking out and they've got pimples all over, I do the normalizing all over the skin. It's not just necessarily a spot treatment. I can use it all over the skin. But, and I used to actually use it on my model's skin all over her skin um, a long time ago, but her skin is just so much healthier and gorgeous right now. Um, hello from England. It's so nice. My model on the, my table is from England. So that's really nice. Thank you for being here. What ingredients uh, do you recommend that really work to nourish and help with aging around the eyes? Um, okay, um, I'm sorry, I'm like squinting here. It's, um, the, you know, the small writing. <laughs> um, around the eyes, I really like, um, you know, I use the Q-flavonoid and as I mentioned, around the eye area, we wanna use pro ingredients that really support thin skin and blood vessels. So there's Arnica, vitamin K and vitamin P. Um, I love mulberry extract. Um, I love kojic acid. I like um, Alentoine very much. I like glycerin. These are things that really help support and nurture a skin. Um, I love um, aloe vera. I love cucumber extract. Um, these are some really nice ingredients for the eye area. Um, you know, hyaluronic acid and moisture binder, any of these things are wonderful. Any comments on using um, photo lead on, on skin of color? Uh, thanks again, happy holidays. Um, okay, lead lights. I, I talk a lot about lead lights in that it's not, then I'm not a fan, okay? I, I, love, um, I love the purple, I love green, I love blue. Because a lot of people that are blotchy, um, if you know, I studied color therapy and in color therapy, red is a stimulant. Okay. That's why they have, um, takeout restaurants in and out burger, McDonald's There's red. It's a stimulant. Okay. Um, if you wear red clothing, it changes the hemoglobin blood cells. It stimulates your cells. Now I love the color red. 
but um, I don't have a really oily skin. As I said, I'm just oily around my nose, a little bit on my chin. I'm, a, I'm a, what we call a combination dry skin, mostly dry. Um, I could use a red light, but because I'm, I'm a fairer skin with a little you know, freckles, I don't like using red lead light because I feel like it can add to melasma. Now, a lot of people say that red light is soothing, calming, blah, blah. For me, it is not at all. If you want soothing, calming, go with purple, green or blue light. Um, you know, these are soothing colors. They're soothing on cells and cells respond to color. Um, you know, it's it's really quite extraordinary. On skins of color, which is something that was asked, the question, um, skin of color, um, on darker skin tones, um, you know, you probably could use red lead light more successfully than a lighter skin, you know, tone like my skin. Because my big fear is with stimulating, if somebody has melasma and all their skin is blotchy, you don't want to stimulate melanocytes and you don't want to stimulate pigment and because it can make it worse. So my suggestion, but you know, a, a darker skin tone could probably handle for sure, it makes sense, um, the red lead, okay, lead colorings. Um, but again, I'm a huge fan of the blues and purples and the greens because most people are a little blotchy. Um, you know, most people have something. I've got freckles and, um, and minor freckles, but a lot of people have melasma and I just really like the purple, green, and blue light. I don't use them in my treatment because I feel like my facial, I've got so much to do. Um, they can do that at home. It's, uh, I wanna do things that my clients can't do at home in my treatment room for my clients. Uh, what kind of head wrap was that one that you used? Okay, um, these are called diapers and they are, um, I actually, you can buy them at sometimes at Target. Um, they're, they're a diaper. They, they, um, they stretch and they wrap really well. Sometimes you'll see me use a towel, but because it doesn't stretch the same, it sometimes, you know, the hair comes out quickly. Um, but the diapers are really great. And they're also a great face towel to use as a towel um, to remove product and things. I would use them for everything if I could, but my laundry service does not have diapers. Uh, so when I do a diaper, I have to take it home and wash them myself. That's why I use, and you know, I like to use a laundry service because everything's done. Mine's a medical laundry service. Um, so everything is really sterile, you know, is, is cleaned well. And that's really important to me. Um, guys, I want to thank you for being here. I don't, um, I'm going to end with my questions. Um, thank you for being here very much. And as I said, the mask is going to be another video. And um, I hope you learned some things today. Um, for a lot of you that are new Westies, um, I know that, you know, this. it's important for you to watch the steps and find your own magic in your treatment. So, you know, if there's some things that you can pull and not every facial massage move is going to work for your fingers. Um, but just to be able to find your own magic and and make something special with that and customize your treatments um, for a lot of you that um, want to see more and see more about my treatments and what I'm doing in a 30 minute, a 60 minute, a 90 minute, um, sign up for my webinar that is in three weeks on the 22nd of January. You can sign up at, at the fivestarmethod.com. Um, and I know I'll see a lot of my Five Star Method people there too. Um, thank you for being here and I look forward to seeing you all again really soon. Bye-bye. And I shall turn this around just so you can see my model. There she is. Um, and I'm going to be putting on a mask and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.